Let the galaxy burn. Hi guys, Skypoint here. I've been having an absolute blast playing as Lorgar and the Word Bearers. And I wanted to share with you today a quick video showing a couple of fights with Lorgar against the Night Lords. I'm focusing on the Night Lords because, in my opinion, they're one of those legions which you face quite often, right? A lot of people like playing as the Night Lords, and they can also be very difficult to beat. So today, we're going to take a look at two fights against Conrad Kurtz and one fight against Sevatar. Alright, let's start with the first Conrad Kurtz fight. So this is a pretty ugly set of cards to start with, so I was taking a full mulligan on them, and I didn't get much better. Fantastic. So Conrad Curse, most of the time you'll see them spend their first turn doing this. Two energy to lower your attack, and then they headbutt you. Okay, I am actually still not getting much, so this is where uh, Lorgar's new ability kicks in, and I create a dark gift for one energy. Okay, so Conrad's playing Asteroid Belt, so clearly he's going to be racing ahead and trying to con trying to transform into the Night Haunter. So I've got to be prepared for that. Luckily, I have two anti-stealth troops in my hand. I need to sit on them until I can use them to kill Conrad. Or Night Haunter, as he'll become by then. So look at him just drawing cards like crazy. Okay. So, this, things are looking dangerous. He's got Vorax out already. So what I'm going to try and do is give him something to chew on instead. Let's make Vorax look... Ex let's make that guy look extra tempting by giving him a Demon Host. So now I'm hoping that Vorax will spend at least one of its attacks going into him. Oh yeah, there we go. He's actually spending, I think, both of his attacks? Yeah, okay, great. So that took care of the Vorax. And then Conrad's doing his signature move, lowering my attack to zero and then attacking me. Okay, I'm three points behind him on health at this point, so let's just go ahead and throw out Kurtha said. I always expect Kurtha to just die pretty much immediately, but he forces the enemy to spend some effort going after him. Oh, that's an interesting one. I didn't expect that. Oh, all right. So he used 10th Oath to uh, lower the attack on Kurtha low enough that Melgator could actually make him bounce back. And actually now I have 5 cards in my... No, oh, that's close. I almost had too many cards in my hand. Okay, so let's just go ahead and start trying to empty out my hand. Although Fasadian Infantry is a bad idea for emptying out your hand because when it dies, a card goes right back in. I'm kind of hoping that he's going to ignore the Fasadian infantry so that they can feed an Ashen Circle while Sor Bakpal creates a demon. Watch, let's see. Yeah, this should work out. So let's try this now. He's got nothing to hit with Sor Bakpal, with um, Ashen Circle, so let's just go ahead with this for now. Draw a card. It's an abandoned supplies. Okay, let's take a look at what this comes out to. It's a. Ugh. So I hate it when you use abandoned supply and you draw either a zero cost or a one cost card. It's such a waste. You actually spent more energy than you saved. Oh, here we go. Ornatov's barge. Look at all those guys. Okay, and he's finishing off one of my troops. Interestingly in... Oh! Destiny's hand! <laughs> yes, indeed, sometimes fate does take care of itself. So let's just go ahead and give me a bunch of demons. There we go. Neato. Look at all that. That's beautiful. And... Let's throw out my nurglings and I'm just gonna see if I can dump one more nurgling back nope we're gonna just use testamentum veritas to make those guys tough enough that Conrad curse might struggle to go invisible let's see what happens now 
Okay, so he is going invisible. Is he doing anything? Nope, he's just hanging out there. So now I can't do much, but what I will do is take advantage of all of these demons to also trigger my own whisper. I am behind him on health, but let's see what happens now. Oh god, look at that. Atramentar. And he's starting to try and weaken out my demons. Fair enough. Ooh, a tear in reality. Let's just go ahead and start clearing up some room over here. So I can start getting ready to put some units down. Perfect. I turn him into a demon of my own. And start headbutting him. Now Now that my chaos bonds are going down to 2 health, he will be able to go invisible just by killing any one of them. But I do have a neat backup trick, as you might notice. So that's what I expected him to do. He went invisible. Pyramid of Fotep. And an Edict of Censure to put all my tactics away. Wow. Alright. That actually helps me. My hand was getting a little too full. I think he was hoping I would get rid of any um, tactics which got rid of invisible stuff. But luckily it's troops which I have for that instead. So let's go ahead and start throwing a bunch of my guys here into him. Oh, that's it. It's over. Boom. Once I had invisible, I had enough troops that I could just cut him down easily. Alright, so that was the first match against, uh, well, the first Kurtz. Let's go ahead and take a look at another one. Alright, so... Zesugul Squad is good for the first move. The five energy ones, perhaps not so good. So let's just go ahead and mulligan them. Oh, that's perfect. A card to play in each turn. Ugh, Recon Claw. You know, I don't like using Recon Claw when I play as Night Lords because I just feel it becomes a little too much of a crutch. Okay, but with Recon Claw out there, I'm not playing Zesugul Squad when I can do Abandoned Supplies instead. And usually it doesn't hurt to try to go after Kurtz so you can just damage him to help try to kill him before he transforms. Or at least make sure after he transforms that he's reasonably weak and killable. Alright, let's go ahead and drop my newly discounted unit and create a Dark Gift. And there's another unit. Perfect. Okay, Nostramo, so now I cannot attack. And that critically stops my horse occultist from attacking and creating a mark of chaos. Alright, I'm going to drop these guys and let's use that dark gift of mine and see what comes up. Okay, terror. That's not the greatest move, but at least I get another horse occultist. Oh, and draws check. Fantastic. And he's getting stronger. Okay, so that cameo will be useful later on, I guess. Let's give him another one. Oh, great, he's got cleave. That's going to help to start dealing with that recon claw. In fact, next turn, I can convert that recon claw into a demon if I really want it. There are some nice taints of chaos. And to try and set up my destiny's hand next turn, let's play Zesugul Squad. He's going to try and kill a bunch of my troops to try and make his demon stronger, his um, Endros check much stronger. So let's see how this works out. Dirty fighter. Oh, he's going for my uh, demon hosted dude with that. Yep, bye bye. Alright. He's giving flank. Okay, there's another one of my guys dead. And is he going straight for me? No, he's not going for me yet. Okay, this is a bit of a gamble because I'm going to buff that guy like crazy, but let's see what happens here. One, two, three, four. Wow, he's up to 18 attack. I am betting on him attacking me and then me being able to somehow finish him off quickly as well. Let's see how this goes because with Testamentum Veritas, all these demons of mine can become pretty strong. Okay, he stops me from attacking. Interesting. 
And he goes straight into me, of course. Alright, I'm about to lose next turn unless I win during this turn. So let's go for it. Step one, Whisper of Chaos. Although I didn't actually need that. Now that I look at it, I could have won with Cameo as well, but whatever. Let's go ahead and turn his guy into a demon for me, so he definitely cannot kill me next turn anymore. It's actually a great demon. It's a uh, the Slanish demon, which has fast, which is perfect. There we go. Neato. Two more turns to win before he transforms. Ooh, curse is chosen. But actually, you know what? I don't need curse. I don't need my troops to actually win over here. I've won. Watch. So let's just go ahead. Use cameo right now to destroy Curse's Chosen. There we are. And then lastly, go in with the demon and finish off with a blast from Lorgar. Cool, so that was the second uh, Conrad Curse. That one I killed before he managed to transform. And then the other Night Lord, Warlord, who you tend to see quite a lot is Sevatar. So let's go ahead and see this deck against Sevatar. Alright, let's take a look at my starting cards. Eh, I would like to have cheaper cards, but with Fasadian Infantry, I'm likely to draw another card. So, I'm hoping that with the odds being with me, I'll draw cards and have stuff to play. At least I've got something for my first turn. I can put Fasadian Infantry down and create a Dark Blessing in my hand. Death to the false emperor. Ooh, or a Zesugal Squad. Let's go with Zestigal Squad. I tend to like saving for Sadian Infantry if I can to feed to an Ashen Circle. So he's going ahead trying to take down my troops. And he's healing himself. Great. Hmm. Not something for three energy. So let's put down the Fasadian Infantry and create a Dark Blessing. I should have probably taken out his guy with my zealots. I'm sort of just trying to save my zealots to see if something interesting pops out from my hand later on. Ooh, an ashen circle. That is kind of interesting, but there's no targets to kill. Let's go ahead and throw those zealots into him now. I'm getting to the point where he might have rule of fear. Oh, it's defense satellite. That's pretty much the same effect. Hey, at least Zesugul squad survived. That's going to force him to try to kill him with his warlord. Yeah, there we go. That's a smart move to make. Alright, what do we do here? Let's see. We're going to throw out Kurtha Sed. And that's it for now. Uh, fast flank trooping troop guy. Okay, bye bye Kurtha Sed. And then his Warlord hits me. Okay, entering the 6 energy turn. So what do we do here? We're going to bring out Diabolus Fall. And what does he get? He gets Wings. Boo! And a Nurgling. So if I can drop a unit and have it die next turn, these guys will both get buffed. And oh my god, there's Endros Shek. Alright. I need my anti-stealth troops to come out now. Come out and play. In the meantime, all I can do is try and throw out juicy targets for Endros Shek to go after instead of me. Spectre of Judgment, because they did not get Demonic Ward, so there's my buffing gone. And he goes and kills a Nurgling, and he's continuing to buff up Endros Shek, who's now on 8 attack. Evidently, he doesn't think 8 attack is enough. Alright, let's go ahead and create some more troops. Let's drop a Nurgling. Let's give a uh, dark gift to my little troop generator and bring out a Ashen Circle. And that buffs and does check more. Or we can go ahead and start trying to attack him a bit, cut his health down. If Endos check comes after me now, I'll be on 19 health, which is close to what he's on, so that's okay. Oh god, 12 attack. 
and breach. Oh, guys, it's going to go up to 14 attack. Hmm. Interesting. Alright, let's just keep this party going. We're going to try and destroy that Dreadnought. Although, and let's check. Now, 16 attack. Let's nail the Dreadnought. That's going to do some splash damage, which should hit the Endos check as well and start softening him up. There we are. Create a dark gift. Let's go ahead and give a dark gift to this dude over here. Oh, that's what I was hoping for. Either ward or survivor. Um, survivor is better, I think, in this case. 18 attack on Endros check. Okay, here's his... Goldstone, who dies, but now I'm up to 19, 20 attack on Endros check, and I've got 29 health. Getting close to dying here. I need my anti-stealth guy to come right now. A 22 attack. Urker's on. Boo. Oh, hey, actually, I can kill him now, but let's just use my anti-stealth dude. Alright, here we are. So... Let's go ahead and throw my... Ooh, wait. There's my demon. He's back. 26 health. And finish him off. Okay. And go throw my guy into there. You know what? I could have just killed the guy. Killed him by throwing Ashen Circle into his warlord earlier. Whatever. Dark gift to this dude here. And drop some Nurglings and create some more fodder. All right, that's a nice full board over there. Fast troop goes and hits me. Yeah, he realizes the writing's on the board. It's not much he can do now. Yeah, I have totally overwhelmed him. And there's my second guy. Let's just finish it off less by triggering my Whisper of Chaos. This is just showing off now. I could just kill him. And what we're going to do here is get my guy off the board so that I can turn his guy into my demon. Just to, you know, establish dominance. And now finish him off. Put him out of his misery. I dragged that one on way longer than I should have. I think I could have won last turn, in fact. Alright, anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Just showing you how Lorgar can work against the Night Lords. And you can see those were decks which tended to have a fair number of the legendaries in there. I think I lucked out a little bit with Conrad in that I did not face Mercy and Forgiveness, which lets him act twice every turn. But honestly, most of the time, if you face a Conrad who plays that early on, the game is over, at least in my experience anyway. Alright, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, stay tuned, I will be throwing out more in the next couple of days, and I will hopefully be streaming my alt account and its attempt to try to reach Terra. Alright, until then, bye for now guys.